Hey everybody, and Tony here with a review of Puccini's Turandot, which was live streamed from the Metropolitan Opera House and was shown at the Kino India Kultur Brauerei. The conductor was Paolo Carignani. The director and set designer was the great Franco Zeffirelli. The costumes were done by Anna Anni and Dada Saligieri. The lights were handled by Gil Wexler. The choreographer was Chang Ching, and the Director of Photography was Barbara Willis-Sweet. Now, this also marks the third time I've seen this opera from another production, and also the second time I have seen the Zeffirelli production. Third, if you also count the one that I own with Placido Domingo as Calaf, Eva Marton as Turandot, and Leona Mitchell as Leo on DVD. So you already know what I thought about the Franco Zeffirelli production, as it's definitely one of my most favorite productions of Turandot ever. And if you've already watched a lot of my opera reviews, you already know that Franco Zeffirelli is one of my most favorite opera directors of all time, who's also specialized in film and theater. So he definitely needs no introduction whatsoever, and especially when it comes to this production, because if I really say what I thought about this production, I'd already come off as a broken record. So it's just suffice to say that Everything about this production was intricate. I love the choreography, I love the costumes, and everything just really bursts with life and beauty and grandeur. So this production needs no introduction whatsoever. So let's just cut straight to the singers, starting with Nina Stemme, who sang our title heroine. Now, Nina Stemme was a soprano who had a very interesting career. In the late 80s, she started off singing a lot of the lyrical roles, starting off with Gerobino from Marriage of Figaro, and then working her way up to the likes of Pamina, the Countess Almaviva, Donna Anna, Donna Elvira, uh, Elsa, the Tenhoisa Elisabeth, Eva Pogna from Die Meistersinger von Nürnberg, and she basically sang a lot of lyrical and spinto roles growing up. And somewhere along the line in like the mid-2000s, late 2000s, she started to sing a lot more dramatic roles, starting with the likes of Zeglinda and even that of Isolde. And then in the 2010s, she then expanded her repertoire to the likes of Brunhilde and even more Isoldes and even a couple of Electras and Turandots. So she was definitely a soprano who had a very interesting career, starting off with a lot of the lyrical roles and then building up to a lot more spinto roles. And then look at her now. She is a dramatic soprano, specializing in the likes of Isolde, Brunhilde, Elektra, and tonight's opera, Turandot. She has led a very exciting career, and this is definitely evident in her portrayal of this role. Now, unlike a lot of her predecessors, likes of Birgit Nilsson, Gertrude Grob Brandl, and uh, Eva Marton, and even Gina Chinia, who really sing this role as a powerhouse role, Nina Stemme handles this role with a lot more lyricism and a lot more human emotion as well. She basically adds a lot more dimension to this character and puts in a lot of her flaws, a lot of her insecurities, a lot of her doubts, aside from her overall external, well, facade. She really brings a lot of depth and layer to this character, and even in terms of her singing, which I really have to say, it was a very fine and very wonderful voice. And it's really evident that she's had years and years and years of experience building up to this type of voice of where she is singing right now. You could really tell that she's had a lot of experience. She's had tons of experience. And you could really see that evident in the way she was able to sing Turandot. She was able to sing with a very fine technique, and even though it wasn't really like, like the hugest instrument that you'd ever see, it definitely is something that involves a lot of character, involves a lot of feeling, involves a lot of expressivity, 
and just a lot of sensitivity to the character, which really does put a huge mark on Nina Stemma in terms of everything that she really puts her heart into into this role. And then we have her lover or the unknown prince, Kalaf, sung tonight by Marco Berti. He also sang this role at the Arena di Verona about a year and six months ago, and I thought he did really well. And he still does very well in this role. He still maintains his very fine timbre. He still maintains a very fine stage presence without going too over the top or without underacting. And he's just still very fine. I really, really liked his timbre, and I still continue to like his timbre because it has a fine, ringing voice, mostly through the middle register and even some of the high notes as well. And he sings his role really well with such feeling and with such finesse that is quite evident for a veteran singer like Marco Berti. In fact, his chemistry with Nina Stemma is also really great, as you could really see that there is a lot of great vocal magic between these two fine veteran singers. And then we have the role of Liu, sung by the young Romanian soprano Anita Hartig, who I also saw about one year ago as Micaela from the Metropolitan Opera production of Carmen. Now, for those of you who don't know Anita Hartig, she did start off in a lot of the light lyric soprano roles like Susana, Pamina, the Fidelio Marceline, and Serlina. Nowadays, she's even building herself into a lot more of the lyrical roles like Mimi and Liu. She's basically almost like the successor of the likes of Rosana Carteri, Mirella Frenni, and Adriana Maliponte, in which these sopranos were very well known for singing a lot of roles in the light lyric repertoire and even to the more fuller lyric soprano repertoire, though at times they've also experimented with some of the coloratura roles. With Anita Hartig as Liu, she really, really is a pro when it comes to really playing all these suffering heroines who have such an inner strength, yet so much beauty, so much innocence, and so much life and love that they're willing to give for another. She really is a pro in these type of roles, and her singing is a huge plus, as usual. She has a very fine and creamy voice, almost very reminiscent of the likes of Adriana Maliponte. She really sells it in this role. She is a fine actress and a wonderful and touching musician. She was able to really, really bring out a lot of colors, a lot of wonderful moments as Liu, and she managed to really sell them wonderfully. Singing the role of Kalaf's father and also Liu's old master is the wonderful Alexander Tsimbaliuk. Now, Alexander Tsimbaliuk is yet another singer I've also been following from some time, and he specializes in a lot of the bass baritone and basso cantante repertoire as well. And here he is singing this very fine basso role, though very thankless. I thought his voice was completely in shape, and it's a very fine voice with a velvety timbre and a lot of wonderful moments and with a fine and commanding stage presence to boot. In fact, in an interview with the host of the evening, Renee Fleming, he even mentioned that his major dream role one of these days is Philip II from Verdi's Don Carlo. Well, if he's going to end up seeing this role, I am going to really, really be the first one to witness it. And I probably might end up being one of the first people to witness him seeing this role. And I know for a fact that he's going to do very wonderfully in this role. So I'm not going to mince words here. Mr. Tsimbaliuk really does a fine job singing such a thankless character like Timur. 
And then we have the roles of Ping, Pang, and Pong, sung by Dwayne Croft, Tony Stevenson, and Eduardo Valdez. Three very fine singers who are also Met veterans as well. And they really blended well together with Dwayne Croft's lyric dramatic baritone voice alongside Tony Stevenson's and Eduardo Valdez's more character tenor voices. They really make a great trio together and really meshing each other's voices very well with such a fine chemistry and an equally fine stage presence that they were able to work really well off of each other. And then we have the role of the old Emperor Altawum, sung by Ronald Naldi, who has a very fine voice, and even though I may not too care too much for it, he still is a very fine actor, he still is a very fine musician, and he's able to really, really sell it with this extremely thankless character. And then we have the role of the Mandarin, sung by David Crawford, who has a very fine voice and a very fine stage presence. And even the Met Chorus does a very fine job, especially when it comes to the dancers and especially to the gentleman who played the role of the executioner. I thought they did very well in terms of really heightening the drama. So overall, I have to say that the singing here is just fine all around, especially the conducting done by Maestro Paolo Carignani. There were no faults in the conducting whatsoever, and it was definitely a really wonderful experience that I've had with Turandot. And even in an intermission feature with Renee Fleming, when she interviewed Christine Opolais, when she sang... Manon's aria for Puccini's Manon Lescaut, In quelle trine morbide, I thought that Miss Opolais did very wonderfully in that aria, and I'm really anticipating this live stream of Manon Lescaut by Giacomo Puccini a lot more, even though it's going to be on March 5. And that anticipation is definitely heightening up a lot more than I thought, so I'm really excited for this live stream. So overall, I really have to say that Zeffirelli needs no introduction whatsoever when it comes to this flawless production, and especially when it comes to a cast heralded by the likes of Nina Stemma and Marco Berti. I thought that everyone was able to pull themselves up together and really offer such an excellent evening with such a very fine opera like Puccini's Turandot. Well, that's all for now. Be sure to tune in for another review. And it's also my one-week break from my school, so do expect a lot more reviews to come in the following week. So until then, good night, everybody.